Cancer intervention tends to focus largely on the end game, you might say, like chemotherapy or radiation therapy to shrink the tumor or surgery to cut it out. The technologies to do this have certainly improved over the years. But what if we were better equipped to prevent cancer from even starting? How many more lives might be saved? How much more invasive treatment might be avoided? Welcome to part two of fixing cancer's risk factors. In part one, we probed the underlying causes of cancer. Cancer is very common, colon cancer is common, but there are certain cells of your body that are virtually immune from cancer. And that tells us a lot of interesting stuff, like your muscles. Heart cancer is virtually unheard of. Now for part two, if we can detect the earliest risk factors for cancer, how do we then defend against those risks? Dr. Dan Goodenow has spent decades developing systems of early disease detection. He's conducted clinical trials into ovarian, colon, and pancreatic cancer identifying the early warning signs of cancer risk to enhance prospects for prevention and treatment. The Dr. Goodenow Research Institute continues to research breast, colon, and pancreatic cancer. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we look at how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. I think we've probably touched on this to some degree, um, but just in a nutshell, why does cancer target certain cell tissues and, and organs rather than others? It targets tissues that are more susceptible to being in the fed state. A good example is breast cancer. Okay, breast cancer is one of the highest rates. And we have a genetic risk factor for breast cancer called the BRCA gene. Okay, so the BRCA protein, okay, so women who have this the BRCA mutations, BRCA1, BRCA2, right, um, they have significantly elevated risk of breast cancer. So much so that many of them will go through and get mastectomies, right? Which I think is horrific, personally. But the point is, is that what that BRCA gene actually does, the BRCA protein that the, the BRCA gene codes for, that protein is like, it, it, it maintains the fasting state of a cell. Okay, so when the cell switches from fed to fasting, the BRCA protein holds it in the fasting state. It's like a lock in the, um, in your wheels, if you will, just like a lock, right? And women who have a BRCA genotype, that locking mechanism is faulty. So it, it doesn't really hold the cell in the fasting state. So it goes in the fasting state and it skips out of gear and it goes to the fed state. It can't really hold the fasting state. And so that's why those cells can't maintain their fasting state. And so that's why the risk gets really high. But it only gets manifested in an individual who dietarily and lifestyle-wise, um, doesn't can't maintain that type of cellular environment. Because even though the risk factor is high, okay, um, not everyone will get, you know, not everyone with a BRCA genotype will get breast cancer. And so when you say they can't maintain that the right cellular environment, what what does that mean? So so when the body is using um, fatty acids for metabolism, when you're in the fasting state, this is when your body makes certain critical molecules in your cell. It makes your plasmalogens for your membranes. It makes your hormones and so many other things, right? And so when you're using fatty acids as energy, and so when it can't do that, your, your, your body can't use the fatty acids and it, it repackages them on triglycerides and send them back to your fat cells. So your, your triglyceride levels will elevate, which again indicates that your cellular strength is poor. If you go to your doctor and you get your fasting triglyceride levels, right? If it's over 100, okay, you're in, using the United States scale, um, that means your cellular metabolism is, is impaired. Okay? People should have fasting triglycerides in that 60 to 90 range. As soon as it gets over 100, by definition, either your, your cells are not metabolizing all the fatty acids that are coming into it, which means the cells can't, the fasting state of the cells are poor. And so often we get inflamed and other things will cause our triglycerides to level, to elevate in the fasting state. So yeah, that's what happens. So when, when, when the body can't use fatty acids for energy, then um, it is forced to use glucose. And if it's forced to use glucose, then it, gr it gradually trains itself to be a glucose sensitive cell. And as it trains itself to do that, it eventually becomes cancerous. So whereas your skeletal, your, your skeletal muscle and your heart, they basically have no choice. They, they, have, they, they run on 80, 90% fatty acid energy. Like they just can't, like it's fatty acids or nothing for them type of thing, right? So th that's why they really are resistant 
to becoming cancerous because like they really they're programmed and they're they're adapted to really just using fatty acids or, or, or very high percentage of fatty acids for the metabolism. Why is it that people, older people, are more susceptible to cancer? Why does cancer manifest in, in their cells more often? It's a combination of things. One is this cholesterol regulation decreases with age. You, you know, if you look at people as they get older, okay, the fasting triglycerides start going up with an age association. Your fasting insulin goes up. Okay, so your type 2 diabetes, like the incidence of type 2 diabetes goes up as we get older. All of these metabolic diseases are indicative of your cellular health becoming less and less functional. Okay, so these are all these age-associated things. So the part, so your cellular health as you get older goes down. Plasmalogen manufacturing is a critical component of all-cause mortality. It's a very important part of your plasma, your, your membranes, very critical for your reverse cholesterol transport. Virtually every single cancer, every single cancer that I've studied, okay, and we're talking tens of thousands, over 100,000 uh, person studies, every single cancer has low plasmalgin levels. We publish this with breast cancer and so on and so forth. So this, this is an indic, and plasmalgins go down as you get older, so the cellular, you know, regulation. Plasmalgins are kind of a partner in your three-legged race, for example, right? And so as we get older, that that one partner loses its function. So that's one of the big things. And then, of course, your police department, right, your immune system also starts diminishing with age. So your ability to come in and take care of the mess goes down. So you, you get kind of a double whammy, right? One, your susceptibility goes up, your ability to contain it kind of goes down, but also your policing mechanism, your immune regulatory system um, also diminishes. So you have a bunch of little things that kind of add together to increase your risk of cancer as you get older. We, we touched on before, you, you gave that very interesting example with India, the comparison between the, the cancer rates that are seen in India and America. So, so about 27% of the population in India smokes, and about 23% of the population of the United States smokes. So India has more smokers than the United States, but it has seven times less lung cancer than the United States. So really? Smoking is causing cancer. Does that make any sense to you? And that begs the question: What is it in the environment in India that's different to America that that brings this effect? So, what what kind of key environmental factors are at play in influencing someone to have cancer or not? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So, a lot of it is our diet. Okay, the type of diets that we eat, um, the high fat, but it's also the the frequency of our diet. Okay, so that we that we eat in the West, and all the answers are not there. One thing for colon cancer is clear is the turmeric use. Okay, so that's a good, here's a really interesting nugget for people. So curcumin, which is part of turmeric, the spice of curry, for example, right, um, which is high prevalent use in India. Curcumin and the turmeric type spices have a very, very clear negative association. So higher turmeric use, lower rates of colon cancer. Very, very clear. Um, and so in terms of the colon cancer risk, that's one aspect of it. And the turmeric the curcuminoids are actually very potent anti-inflammatories, um, and so they have things across the board that can benefit from us. So there's those environmental things. It's the type of meat and the amount of meat that is eaten um, is probably a big deal. So I guess it, it's the difference between eating red meat and, and other types of meat? Yeah, and the amount of it. Um, and so and it, it might even be the type and quality of the meats, too. Like there's so many variables that can go into that. Okay, aspect. It's clearly not, you know, environmental toxins. Like if you ever been to Delhi or Hyderabad, you know, it's not exactly the cleanest city in the world. And so, it's, you know, it's, so the working environment, like the actual smog or, you know, it can't be that fundamentally because it clearly the, the general environmental stress is probably higher in, in India than it would be in the United States. So it has to be more to do with their diet and lifestyle and all the individual factors because they carry their low risk with them when they come from India to the United States. So it's clearly their, their dietary lifestyles.